Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's a Spurs podcast here on Tottenham on Tour. We have a couple special guests with us today. We've got Holly Agamar and Lee from... Uh, is, uh, Lee, where are you from, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? I'm in, it... I'm in Somerset in the southwest of England. I, I was thinking more along the lines of your channel. It's Lee, fan, uh, oh. Tottenham fan. Yeah, just wondering, yeah. is that is that your YouTube channel? Is that your Twitter? Yeah, that's my YouTube channel, but it's just for Spurs related. But I've, I've actually got a Spurs channel itself. I just do like other things, but Spurs just made me a hobby. But I haven't got a channel as such. I, I just gotcha. Mind name. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to just throw that on you. I was just curious. No, I wanted no, no, to make no, sure. Yeah, I no, asked, I asked channels. the right question off the top. And of course, Holly, Holly Agambar, uh, <clears throat> great to have you on the channel. We've been sort of, you know, neglecting you to some extent, so we want to <laughs> apologize for that. We had you on our previous channel, and uh, we should have had you back. And then, of course, we've been like, oh man, because I, I, I watch your stuff all the time. So, thanks for being here. Uh, glad, but, you're, glad you're with us. Like I say, no, um, it's normally me. I'm all over the place. I don't, don't need to apologize. But no, I'm, I'm happy to be here now. So that's the main thing. Fantastic. Fantastic. As of course, my partner in crime, Bri. How are you, brother? Everything is groovy. I went and saw Bob Spur in person today. Um, obviously, everyone knows he's making progress in leaps and bounds, uh, but seeing him today was just incredible. The uh, He's got a lot of work physio to do, obviously, with being in a bed the uh, entire time since uh, early December. Um, but the personality, the, the sharp wit, the, the smile, the cheeky grin... <laughs> All, 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 all the all the great Bob stuff was there in abundance, and to see it in person as opposed to just on uh, on uh, the mic like he was yesterday was just so refreshing. Because the last mm. time I saw him, I was very worried, very worried. But yeah, we I were lucky to have him enough on him on our stream. I don't know if anybody tuned into that. If you didn't, go back and watch our last stream, uh, the pop up we did at the weekend, and uh, Bobby hopped on and uh, did Bobby things, and it was it was it was fucking glorious. I, I know I swear before the swore before the ten minutes is up, but I couldn't resist. Yeah. I mean, he uh, it was just it just brought. I think everybody uh, lifted from that. You know, and obviously the the result from Spurs was great, but that was just levels of above anything else. The, the importance of, uh, of of him getting better is massive. So I have to tell, I'll tell you something about how important it was so uh i spoke to cody straight off the stream cody mac and just said to him you okay how you doing because it was the first time he'd heard bob and he did a uh he said something nice uh regarding cody so i said you okay was that to him and he was like do you know what i literally tottenham we are tottenham tv were doing their fifa videos he said i quickly popped out went onto that video that stream and said by the way hello bob spur is on tottenham on tour goodbye and came over and just literally obviously we saw in the comments it just went absolutely mm. crazy um it was a, a a fantastic thing to be able to to hear his voice again for the whole youtube community and we were very proud to be on our channel yeah 100 percent. so good man you got me the but gave me a gave me a buzz and uh it was it was a joy uh after again a, a wonderful weekend speaking of a wonderful weekend uh, i'll start with you holly because um the the f to go to the, the the man in the back in, in your background there who's fly, flying upside down stuck to the <laughs> dartboard didn't start at the weekend against city um obviously you were happy about it but based on the result and the our midfield i mean our midfield was a midfield like a proper midfield for the first time i've seen uh probably like arguably since since Dembele left when it comes mm. to the organization and the quality that was there with the transition that we hadn't had uh and i don't know how long it's just been uh, it was it's been a hard watch how 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 good was that Oh, it's so refreshing. Like I say, I'm probably Harry Winks' biggest fan and not to see him like in that starting 11 gave me so much joy. Um, <laughs> like I said, he's staying on that dartboard until he proves to me that he can play football again because he's, yeah, I just can't even fathom how bad he's progressed. But anyway, like you said, that midfield was incredible. I think Ben Tanker, who I butcher his name every single time, yeah, he is just like you say, he's got that... I don't want to compare him to Dembele too soon, but it's just his absolute all. I think there was at one point in our own box, he decides to do a bit of skill to take it around the attack. That was ridiculous. That, that 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 tweet is just like, I keep watching it over mm. and over again. Like, what's he it's doing? Insane. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Incredible how he's got the audacity to go and do that in our box. Like, yeah, he just runs the midfield. And I'm, I'm hoping it continues. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was great stuff to see the midfield run properly for once. Yeah, that, it, for me, it's a transition. It, it, I think that's the thing that we've been missing and why we've seen so much sort of sloppy long balls and kind of mis, miscommunication, lack of transition. It, it, it's been a struggle. Uh, Lee, uh, great to see you. Great, Thanks for coming back on the channel. Know, Pro proper me. proper way to have you here. Um, uh, how, how much did you enjoy the weekend uh, down in yeah, Somerset? Yeah. Um, I think I aged about 20 years after that game. Um, <laughs> like always do a Spurs. Um, 
it was it was brilliant to watch. You know, the commitment from the players was just fantastic. And I was on the flip side of that. It was frustrating as well to think, why didn't we do that against Southampton and the Wolves? What was missing there, and what which we had against City? It's, it's like two different teams, two different performances. Um, I just think we rose to the occasion because it's Man City, and they are the best team in England, possibly the best team in in, in Europe. Um, but I think you know the togetherness with the players from front to back you know, was great, and having Dyer back alongside Romero, I think really showed that up a little bit. There's still a little slight iffiness on on there with with Davies and, and Emerson, but. Going forward, it was just impeccable. And I think, you know, like Alan Shearer said about um, Harry Kane, it was the best centre-forward performance in years, if not ever. I, I I, mean, I think it's arguable to say that it's one of the best centre-forward performances. I mean, I would even say that it's not even just centre-forward. He played a 10 as well, you know. Yeah, he, he was, He was just, it was the most complete performance of a player I've seen in yeah. multiple positions. Just unreal. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, Bri, uh, thoughts uh, a few days later, you know, you're, you're still buzzing, you're still feeling good about the, the situation, despite our performance <laughs> in the uh, in the in the in the um, Sunday Sunday's event uh, on Spurs Spurs related. So there, there's so a comment about that, obviously, I'm going to put there's, there's been two, <laughs> there's been two, and they're by my two trolls, Coover and Bobby K. Um, um, so, 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 yeah, listen, I was just coming down from the Leicester 3 2 high that I was at. Mm. Just got my come down from that, and now I've gone surging back up. I mean, this, <laughs> this. I mean, obviously, people say like the games like Leicester come along once in a, in a, in a blue moon. Like to be there to to watch them is incredible. To be there is like two oh, away games well. like that is just levels man. exactly. Yeah. But then yeah. to do it twice back to back, obviously not back to back away games, but with me with me being at them, um, it was. Do you know what? It was absolutely unbelievable. The, the the away fans, obviously, hardcore, it's non-stop singing. I mean, people were telling me on tweets uh, and, and uh, in the chats that all you could hear on the TV were obviously the Spurs fans singing yeah. non-stop. I mean, those Man City fans are just, honestly, They're they so are. pathetic and sad. <laughs> there were seats there, I mean. Before the start of the season, they were the first team ever to release all their tickets for sale for the whole season. So you could right. buy the last game of the season at home now because they want to make sure they can sell them. And there were empty seats. Uh, obviously, there was where were you, where were you when you were... I'm not going to say I'm going to try. Even though you've gone 10 minutes, I'm going to try and go to 10. Um, <laughs> Sorry, man. i, I got to practice but, no, mate, Listen, mate, for the discussion it was, it was well worth it. Um, yeah. 1-0, when it became 1-0, we had literally just got to our seats about a minute before because it took a while to get through security and we were on a coach. So it, uh, they, were, they were very slow on the uh, letting people in at the empty head, as, <coughs> as we've named it. Um, obviously, to go that one that one go up was insane and we were going crazy. Um, obviously, they got the equaliser and it was like right before halftime, like, oh, geez. Um, but the manner they came out for the second half was to be commended 2-1 and being we Ben Simeon and I were saying if Harry Kane can get a goal or two in this game at this ground, how incredible would that and then obviously he did and we went mad. And then after the third one went in, which was ruled out for offside obviously, Ben and I said literally, do you know what, the next twenty odd minutes, however long it was, is gonna be like the slowest. And literally I thought ten minutes had gone. I looked at the clock, two and a half minutes had gone. I was like, oh Jesus. How am I gonna? Then obviously the penalty, the, the the penalty decision. Um, obviously the atmosphere was like, here we go. It was this intense, is man. It was intense. Even from oh, home, mate. I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> this is but it, but it happened as soon as the ref or the fourth official put seven minutes, and you're just like, oh, it, it's it's written in the stars. And it went nine in the end too. It was just like, yeah, it went. It, it, was like... it went to nine. I mean, whatever you want to say about how they got that penalty, that was one of the best penalties I've ever seen live. It was absolutely, there could have been three keepers in there. No one was yeah, getting razor to it. sharp for sure. Mm. But do you know what the, the, the passion, commitment, desire of the team. And I'm going to highlight Benton core here. And they were saying, this is the difference where a few people tweeted when he got that ball and clipped it forward to Kulisevsky, Um, He could have played it easy to Doherty and played safe, but the, the wanting to win and wanting to get that goal, and obviously, when Kulisevsky crossed that ball, I've never seen a ball move in such slow motion. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as Harry headed it, we didn't even see it. It gone in. The, we were in the top third tier. I thought I was going to end up on the bottom tier. It went 
nuts. <laughs> Absolute nuts. And I'd like to say it's a moment of, um, I'll never get to uh, relive again, but who knows? I'm going to leave with Ben and Simeon again, so I could be on for the hat trick. I know. You so, may, as, uh, may as well. Let's hope so, and uh, maybe Harry Kane but, will get one as well. Yeah. Ben has said if, if it's 3-2 and we score in the last minute, he's calling Alana and saying, right, he's not coming home. So, uh, so <laughs> yeah. we we'll have to see. Good luck yeah, with that, Brad. Good, good luck with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck, me. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, I, I, just just to say about Bentacur as well to add to that um I, I think my player rating if, you, if forgive me if I'm uh, correct me if I'm wrong was it seven did I rate him as a seven I can't or? remember if it was seven or eight it needs it to be one. increased by the way because I've watched it I've watched the like the extended highlights a few times now and uh he was you know he did give the ball away but it was because he was trying to do things that we're yeah. just not used to seeing you know which is that transition game that through the lines quick one touch uh, um, pass, uh, you know, forward pass that that we've been d desperately looking for. You know, um, I mentioned Dembele earlier. Dembele used to do that, you know, dribbling, mm. but it would be this. You get the same result. You get that transition from quickly from defense to offense, and um, yep. you, go on a, you go on an attack. Bentacor, it just does mm. that with. It's just you know, yeah, it's so nice to see because it's desperately what we've been missing for ages. And of course, Erickson, when you know, similarly uh, offered something similar to that. But he's a little further forward, and we we hadn't replaced that either. So we've got uh, Kulu. I mean. I know he's not. I know he's not playing a ten, but he has some some really great, um, you know, a, a technical ability passing like his cross to Kane's winner. Um, Lee, I'll start with you on that. Uh, what were your thoughts of uh, what are we supposed to call him, Brian? What's the the correct way? To, it's uh, not, we're not can't call him Kulu by Decky, by the way, guys. Decky, Decky, yeah, Decky. Kulu apparently Decky, is like yeah. a swear word in some other language, and we shouldn't be calling him that. Uh, yeah. So 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 Decky is the Decky is the term. So Lee, what were your thoughts on Decky's performance? Because I thought he was fantastic. I thought he yeah, no, really, I totally really agree. And obviously, uh, I watched um, I watched obviously back like you did like yourself, and also I watched this interview afterwards. He said he didn't celebrate because he thought he was offside. He was, he was yeah. surprised. He on thought the he was more one, offside. He was right? offside. <laughs> and on the second one, he thought it was as well. He said, oh, "I was surprised that I was offside on the first one. I was, I wasn't sure about the second one, but it, I don't know. It just gave us something more, you know. It gave us so much width and so much dimension. And he looked so so controlled on the ball for someone so young who's only been in the Premiership what three weeks, four weeks. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's fantastic. And I just hope, you know, really hope that he carries on with this for the rest of the season and we can make his deal permanently in eighteen months' time. Um, but knowing Juventus, if he starts playing really well, then it might not be the price." Um, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I think it's great, and also that's what we need. Um, it's just, yeah. And I think when he crossed the ball in for Kane, I think Lucas nearly got to the end of it on the end of that one. It was yeah. just a little bit too high for him. But um, no, overall, it's just it was fantastic, and um, yeah, I think he's going to be a fan favorite. Yeah, for sure. And his attitude is the way he carries himself. He's very seems very humble, humble like mm. Kane a little bit. You know, Kane's quite quite humble in, in the way he presents himself. He's similar mm. to that in a sense. And I think yeah. uh, I think he's looking up to him. You can see that sort of like you know a bit of awe, but also a bit of um, you know I, I I'm lucky enough to work with this guy. I, I get an opportunity mm. to to learn from one of the best. Um, Holly, what were your thoughts on on uh, Decky? Decky, Decky, thank, thank you. What are your thoughts on Decky? I got to get used to that because I've been calling him Kulu forever. So I know, I've been doing the same. Don't worry about it. Um, I've yeah. learned something tonight. Yeah. Um, I think as a, there's been a lot of Spurs fans that, that wrote him off early. I think, mm. and I wouldn't say I was one of those people, but you were kind of expecting more just because of where he's come from. Um, but we need to remember that these players need to adapt. I mean, we held on for so long for Ndombele to adapt to the Premier League. Let's give this guy a bit of slack. Um, but no, he's like I said, I think the only thing he needs to work on is obviously his the way he uses his power because he does get nudged off the ball slightly. But I he think does, that's, yeah. you kind of need to accept that from him coming into this league. But no, I'm, I'm over the moon with him. Obviously, getting that debut goal for him right from the off and then obviously putting that killer ball in for Kane at the end, it just shows that we've got a real talent here. We just need to stay with him, stay patient, and hopefully that he can obviously progress into that player that we all want and need. Yeah, for sure. On the new boys, both of them ran the most out of anybody on the squad in the squad. Yeah, um, it, and that I think that tells you everything about them being mm -hmm. Conte type mm -hmm. players. Conte wants his players to run. He wants them to you know to do what the, both of those players did uh, incredibly well. Bry, thoughts on thoughts on that and just the the um, you know what that means for Spurs when they have players who are going to do that. And of course, all the other players around them ran more as well than they usually do. Yeah, which is nice to see. So, so when it comes to Decky, I mean, with, with with this loan deal, also what we got to play into fact uh, into the case is if uh, Allegri quits or leaves Juve, I don't know what how the next manager feels or how the deal, deal is structured about him being recalled. Um, so that would be interesting should that happen. But 
Kulisevsky, when he first came, I thought he was going to be the one that settled in immediately, knowing the language, fluent English, um, and everything. I thought that would be a huge mm. uh, stumbling block or hurdle he's already overcome. And Holly's right, with his power, he's going to have to learn how to utilise that, because obviously in the Italian league, you go, and it's a free kick. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it, it's, it's true. not, and, and they'll, they'll learn this very, very fast in the Premier League. Um, when I saw him for the first two games, the obvious thing, I watched Brighton at home, but then I was at Wolves when he came on and he grew into that game. And it's his pace, or lack of, shall I say, is, is there to see. But the player I've likened him to, and a lot of people are, is Teddy Sheringham. Not as in standard player, but his footballing brain, the brain is, yeah, for sure. is a lot quicker than his, than his feet. And he seems to be two or three passes ahead. And his, what I've loved about him is his weight of pass is like spot on um, and his quick decision making to get the ball out. To, so that has been very, very impressive. Uh, they were talking about him as a, a right wing back. Um, and I just don't, <laughs> that I don't see. And it's only because no. of the lack of pace. Because yeah. if you're running up and down, up and down, and that, that position has become such one of the most important positions in football, you need the stamina, he's got no doubt. Just the pace he has. And if he gets caught up further up the field, but what he put, the display he put on against City was phenomenal. Phenomenal. He could have had a second assist with Kane's offside goal, um, mm. <clears throat> which was still, if you look at it, he got two crosses that were aiming for Kane and the first one took a bit of a deflection, but they got there. And I can't remember the last time, probably Kieran Trippier going down the right and you thought a ball, right, there's a good chance that that ball is going to uh, to, to reach its destination. So, so that was, was very, very impressive. Benton Corps is from someone I knew nothing of. Mm. He he's discovered that the, the sliding tackles are, are great. He's got to learn, like you said, Brian. He gave the ball away, trying to do positive things, <clears> but he did it one too many times against in some, in some in dodgy some, areas too, Brian. Yeah, it was like exactly. Like, oh, exactly. God, what's he doing? <laughs> and, but again, I think this is with the Italian league. Obviously, the pace of our league is so much faster. He's probably got the time to do that in Italy. Yeah. And it, yeah. but the thing is, at least for once, they're trying. We're trying to be positive. We're trying to get balls forward. We're trying. It's not so. Oh, let's pass. I, people of a certain age will remember a singer called Aaliyah, and one of her favourite songs or first song was "Back, Back, Forth." That's what I did. With, that's what Tottenham were. Literally, they started <laughs> nice going forward, good, then it was good. "Back, Back, Sideways, Side." But at least they're now with these two. There's an outlet. There's a a bit of composure. In, in that midfield and that's only going to grow stronger and stronger yeah and on that note as well to add to that is the one touch football the, the mm. like some of the i think there was the um it was the, the cane one where uh the the keeper made a save it was a, he stuck his foot out and made a save it was like seven one touch passes all the way up the pitch from uh you know from deep and i think that's the one conte posted on his on his instagram about saying saying oh you could call it counter-attacking football but it was just mm. like it was just boom 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 like seven or eight touches gets to kane's foot one touch boom if kane had to chip that in arguably the goal of the season one of the best goals yeah goals you'll you'll see it was incredible how he finished that and simple but football is simple when you do it right and you do it well and you make good decisions it's not that difficult you just have to be good at it good enough at it to, to make those good decisions and, and i think we saw that um lee question about the defense here for me this was probably the, the <clears throat> massive difference that we saw in this game was when harry or sorry when uh, eric dyer is at the center of our defense and you push romero over to the right and then how much better that makes both um romero or sorry um royale on the right and then of course um uh davies davis on the on the left side of the three Mm. everybody in that defense, as soon as Dyer's there, is just way more comfortable. What, what were your thoughts on his him coming back and how important he is to the squad? Um, oh, it's massive. And who would have thought we would be talking about this? If he said know, about six I months know, right? ago, we think Dyer out, he's, a, he's, a, he's an absolute donkey. But um, you got you got to take his health to him. You know, he, he's, he hasn't let him get, get to himself. You know, he's got on with it, hasn't he? he just, you, you know, thought, well, you know, I'm getting my criticism and the only way I can win back the fans is by playing really well and, you know, and hopefully get, get back in the England squad. Um, I think he has to be ahead of Davis and San Sanchez because uh, Sanchez, for me, is just, he's, you know, he's, don't don't get me wrong, he's, he's, he's improved in what he has been, but um, to rely on him, I, I just think it's, it's a worry. Um, I feel sorry for Joe Rodon. 
um, I do believe he deserves a bit more of a chance. Um, but again, if, if, if Dyer gets injured or Romero gets injured or whatever, then we're back down to Sanchez and Rodon again, aren't we? Or, or Davies having to go back and centre back or whatever. Um, it's a difficult one, but yeah, he's massive for us, and and I think his versatility is brilliant because you can put him as a centre back, you can put a bit further forward if you need to, but you can put him on the wing or, you know, who, how many teams have got that? Yeah, there and that, you know, we're, we're lucky to have that, and I think he's, you know, in this moment in time, he's he's irreplaceable at the moment. Yeah, for sure. I think um, just the solidity in the defense and the communication for me, Dyer's voice. Um, is is probably his most his best attribute when when he's not there nobody is in control and you can no. see the sort of madness that takes place when Sanchez is like what do I do what do I do and he looks like he's literally doing that he's like yeah. I don't know what's what I'm supposed to do it's just like complete chaos and then of course when he when Dave Sanchez is beside him with in in completely chaotic um, then of course Royale is going to be chaotic as well yeah. because he's not exactly. in control and so it just it becomes a complete mess Holly what were your thoughts of the defensive performance at Cessignon in particular I thought was much better than mm maybe any of us expected as well do, is what do you what did you think about Cesar's performance yeah i think so because obviously he had a bit of a hard time when he came into the squad and then had a bit of a fluff up and got sent off so i think that's been playing in the back of his mind for a long mm. time but mm -hmm. it's true i mean when we all saw that reggie wasn't in the side and then he came out and said he had covid it was kind of like oh right okay this is why setting young's in the squad it's not because there's been a falling out because that's all we seem to do sometimes is yeah. make up these stories um but no, I think he had a good game. I, th I think he's redeemed himself. But again, it's like you said, it's because we've got Dyer in the back line that's shouting his orders and giving that bit of cohesion at the back. Um, and it's been a long time coming because like you say, obviously, it's nice to see, going off topic slightly, to see Romero and Dyer back together because it's been a long time since we've seen that partnership as well. So I think it's all shaping up again. And it's nice that, yes, OK, if Reggie is out, Sessignon can do a job for us when we've got those two in the middle. So yeah, it's yeah. Good, good times. Yeah, and that competition, I think, is massive because, you know, if you're if you're comfortable in your region and all his only competition was Davis, you know you're you're kind of like he doesn't really have to worry about it. He can no, have a bad yeah. game and he's going to go in first, right? So, um, to 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 have two players that also are very similar in their attributes is is their ability to defend, how they get forward. I think I think Reguilon's probably better crossing for now, but 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 um, Sess has got some. He's good on the ball, you know. He's not he's not he's not crap on the ball, but is a good defender. He can he can run at players and uh, and beat them, um, you know, and get him behind and, and get crosses in. So I think uh, I think we've got a good left sided now. We just got to sort out that right side in the summer. It's going to be a little ways before we get there. Um, Brian, any thoughts on on, on Sess and Yell's performance before we get into sort of uh, a bit of the weeds on on what we might expect to see uh, on Wednesday? Yeah, I mean, setting on, like like Holly said again, with that sending off in uh, that embarrassment in, in Mura, um, <laughs> yeah. everyone was saying, right, this is this is his chance to shine, and obviously, he did the exact opposite. He did himself the world of good against Liverpool when he played and uh, completely kept Salah quiet with the help of Davies, and then yeah, uh, his confidence probably took a huge hit being subbed after twenty six minutes at Wolves, Definitely. but he got a standing ovation as he walked around the stadium like. Which good support, which is good to see, yeah. Uh, and then obviously you see him against Man City because of uh, COVID and you probably thought when a guy's shot of confidence and you've got a banging form Raheem Sterling coming at you, whatever, people probably thought, oh, this is going to be where he goes. But do you know what? Fair play to him. He, he played well. He did what he had to do. He had a heavy involvement in the second half. His movement's getting better. And do you know what? Ev we've got play When he was at Fulham, he knew he was uh, one of the best players, if not the best player. He's a standout and, for sure, yeah. Exactly. And he could do what he wanted and felt confident. Obviously, his confidence has been up and down, up and down, out on loan, injured, what this, that. And Conte, at least, has been the manager, even in his short time, that has given him more game time and whatever. So I think you said I think, that, I think you said there, Brian's spot on is the confidence in, in particular yeah. is what he's given him. He looks like he's comfortable, whereas under Mourinho, he looked terrified. He, like he didn't really quite know what he was supposed to do. The, the only thing before I, I quickly touch on Dyer was obviously with Fulham, he had turned the afterburners on and just go and take a man off the pace. He seems to be doubting himself at the moment and just checking in and playing it easy just because he probably is... He, he, but that will grow. It if will he, come, if yeah, he carries sure. on playing, that will grow. And I think Conte will get to him. And then when it comes to Eric Dyer, I, I loved him. That season we were wearing the seatbelt kit, so to speak, that diagonal. Uh, when he played the defensive midfield role a lot, I mm. thought he was blinding. I thought he was absolutely... He, he, mm. if, if he trailed off near the end. But with Eric Dyer, I think he needs one position. And they say, right, this is where you're playing. 
this is what you're doing and this is the job you do for me um his passing was a bit wayward in the second half but the one thing whether you like him as a defender think he's great think he's uh he needs upgraded the one thing you cannot deny is he is the organizer of that mm -hmm. defense and with him in that defense um with romero who i thought was going to be the center back of a three when we first signed him it moves him to the right and when he's on the right it doesn't it does matter who's playing on the right but he's there to, to, it helps to cover a lot. It. It, i think i think it was four or five times where romero covered royale's ass <laughs> like, but, like like blatantly you know what Bob, but Roy, royale had one of his better games but 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 mm. obviously when you've got emerson there to cover it's so much better than having emerson in the middle uh Roy, uh cootie romero every time i do that romero in the middle and then sanchez and then when it's sanchez and whoever mm. there's a breakdown in communication eric yeah. dyer coming back if you look at the, the the southampton and watford game where he wasn't there uh, the, the way I've been linking it is obviously when there is no uh, Ollie Skip recently, until yesterday's performance, you see a huge Ollie that's Skip hole. Yeah. And that's when you know how dependent we are on him when they're not mm -hmm. there. Yep. And it's the same with Eric Dyer. Whether you, you're, you're a fan of him, rate him or not, he we, one of the main things that have to happen this season for it to get anywhere is to keep him fit. That's yep. one of the biggest necessities because he organises that defense incredibly well. Yeah, for sure. I think the key thing about Dyer too this season from the reason why people generally don't like Dyer is not that he is a bad player. It's that he has bad moments in games and those bad moments often cost us the game. He'd be good 85 minutes and then for five minutes he'll he'll have a moment. He'll shit the bed. He'll give the ball away. He'll get a red card. He'll get a yellow card. He'll give away a free kick. Mm. That's just sort of consistently what Dyer would always do and you're just going, Dyer, come on. Like we know you're better than that. His passing is quite good. Right? <clears throat> you said his passing got uh, went a bit wayward, which is true. I think that's a fitness thing. I think he's he's still managing. Apparently, it's the same injury every time he's been out for the last three times. It's the same. Yeah. I think it's his right thigh or something. And so it's a leg issue. And of course, that mm -hmm. is going to come into play when you are passing the ball. You're going to maybe be a little bit more reluctant than than trying to hoof it up or trying to you know you just it, it, it plays in your mind a, a, a touch. And I would imagine that would would be the the case. But he's cut out the mistakes. I think that that's, that's what's right. making him also probably gives everybody else around him more confidence because he's not sketchy or looking like he might make that error and everybody else is better because of it so the, um, thing, yeah, that well, Brian, the thing of that as well is when it was a back four and he was a part of a two you make a mistake you get punished you true, true. there's nobody three, to cover, cover you yeah that's exactly point. with that three there's that extra insurance policy so that catastrophic mistake might just be it gets an hit. error it gets yeah, in for sure. Yeah, exactly. I think I think that's a great show. I, I don't think we need to talk too much about the forwards, guys. Sonny and Kane doing Sonny and Kane things. They're amazing. Kane was, uh, we said that already. Kane's performance was arguably one of the best we've seen in the Premier League. Unbelievable. Yep. Uh, you know, it's it's been done to death. I, ho I hope he. I just hope he keeps doing this week in week out. I think which we'll get into in the next in the next topic i hope he can do it against teams that he doesn't have the space in behind to exploit mm -hmm. and same with sunny as well and i think um with this game against city it was a conte masterclass. conte understood exactly what he needed to do against um against uh, pep pep generally as a manager what pep generally like how he likes to set up and then of course what spurs have to against uh, seemingly against City on a regular basis, how we seems like we've got their number, which I absolutely love. Being a bogey team of the of the, of the champions and uh, and, a, and a team that just doesn't deserve to be where they are in the first place is a is a is a is a glory. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy. Um, but that 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 performance was amazing from from Conte. I want to know what you guys think. I'll start with you, Lee, about what you expect to see against Burnley. It's going to be obviously completely different. We're going to have way more of the ball getting in behind those, those beautiful passes that Kane's make in cross field or in behind to hit Sonny or to hit, um, uh, <laughs> Kulishevsky. <laughs> I can remember that go. over. You <laughs> um, you know, he's not going to, it's going to be more about breaking them down, getting in between the lines. How we, how is, what's the, what's the game plan for you, Lee, in that scenario? Um, how, how do we, how do we do that? We struggle like with that already as a team, yeah, you know, we, you know, just so you can see what Wolves and Southampton did, you know, they, they you know, they, they, we found it difficult to break them down with Burnley. They are like a very tough team to beat and also to to get through. Um, they're either going to put everyone behind the ball and go in defensively and just hold out for as long as they can, or they're just going to hack us out like they normally do. Um, That's inevitable, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but going to Turf Moor on a Wednesday night in a cold winter's evening, 
going to be tough. But I think if we stretch them, play our re- our natural game, pace, wings, long balls, passing, I don't think they're going to be able to cope with us. Um, but if we sit back and we sit back and then try and catch them on a counter attack, Burnley will play that game all night because they'll just do they'll just go defensive. Um, but the, uh, think, quickly think, on that before you move on, uh, interesting. Burnley just beat Brighton three nil. Yeah, they did. not playing defensive football, utilizing yeah. that new that new striker they have as as a target target man. I'm a bit yeah. worried about him. Do you think do you do you think they'll still sit deep or do you think they'll come out? Because um, because they need points. I mean, they're they they're are, yeah. are, somebody they're mentioned in the comments, uh, which which I, I think is on point. I don't know where it is, um, but yeah, it's a, it, just to recognize that they may they may approach the game a bit differently than we expect. It, it could be a completely open game. It could go it could go like end to end. Um, you know, Burnley have got, you know, I said they got they need desperately for points, and you know they can't really afford the draw. That's not going to help them. So they're going to go on a counter attack, and I think we're going to have to do the same. And it's it go either way. And I think it is whoever's got the, the greatest concentration in that game tomorrow night, you know, in our defence as well as you know, I think it's going to be key. Um, but I think we've got just enough to get through. Um, I think we've got too much firepower for them, and I think you know we're going to be on a on a we're on that wave now after that state yeah game. we should be we should be buzzing right the team yeah, should be like so. oozing some confidence I think and, so. um, yeah had we lost against city i think it would have been a different different scenario the pressure would have been right on um but the fact that we've just come off of, of you know we've just beaten the champions and i think you know it's it's going to give us great chance to to really push um burnley all the way now and i think we you know we've got more than enough in the tank to to get past them yeah, for sure. I think there's going to be some key key players. Uh, Holly, probably the midfield, um, and and our two newbies uh, are going to have a massive effect because yep. again, breaking these teams down it, that sit deep, and we are going to have more of the ball. And there may be a slight difference in how they play because they need yep. points. I still think that they there there's a tendency for them just generally because of quality in the team. We're going to have more of the ball. We're going to need those players who can get in between the lines um, to do that. What, what what are your thoughts on the Conte's approach to this game? Uh, yeah, I think obviously typically they play the low block, don't they? So they're going to mm-hmm. have men behind the ball. But like you said, they, they need to get these points. Um, so if they do come forward, we just exploit the, the gaps behind them like we did against City. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But even if they do sit back, we've seen now that we can be patient, especially for that build up um, for our last goal against City. We can be patient now and we can play that killer ball when we need to. So maybe it is going to be the battle of midfield. Who's going to hang out the toughest in the middle? Because like we say, if we have Winks in there, I think we're going to get overrun. Um, if we have Ben Tanker in there, it could be a different story because he will be the one that finds that killer ball in that tight little space. Um, I would like to see the same team. Uh, I'll probably get onto that in a minute, but I, I think we just need to keep momentum going. And as much as I feel sorry for Lucas being dropped out for um, <laughs> Klaveski, um, I think it needs to stay as it is because he's got a goal and he's got an assist. You can't then take him out when his confidence is riding high. So I think we just need to stick it as it is, basically. And hopefully yeah. our midfield will better their midfield. Yeah, I think that's true. Bri, do you think, well, because we talked a bit, a bit, bit, bit about this on the pop yeah. up in regards to whether we'd see a change. And I, I, I do think there'll be a couple of changes um, purely from a fitness perspective. I think Conte recognizes yeah. that they put a lot into that game. And, you know, only a few days later, they're going to have to do the same. Um, and there's certain positions that we need to probably rotate. Uh, thoughts on, thoughts? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, Lee. So I think Bergwijn might come in and the sun might start on the bench. Yeah, I could see that. I, I was thinking more along the lines of the, the, the wing backs, but I could see that. But I think we talked about Brian. I mentioned that as a possibility yeah. as well. Um, I could see the Royale coming in, Doherty coming in for Royale, um, yeah. purely because of who they're playing. But Brian, thoughts on the, yeah. what, what, what? What do you expect to see against uh, against this uh, Burnley side? Well, first of all, I'm just I've seen a comment that I've wanted to bring up for ages. Um, yeah, I've got two, to, two. I've got a stat as well. So from Fox on the the Hill Prince, last time Burnley beat us. 23rd of February 2019. Oh, wow. um, it's coincidence, so, guys. There's nothing, no such no, thing no, as omens. That, <laughs> for, another, for another coincidence, last time we beat Man when Peter Crouch scored that winner against Manchester City to qualify for the Champions League. Last game of the season, away to Burnley, we lost 4 2. So mm. they're all coincidental, just quirky yeah. stats. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a good one, though. It's a funny one because it's, you know, it's it's a good it's a good circumstance, but it is it, circumstance. It, and that's what it, exactly. So, uh, Listen, we're both coming off very, very confident boosting wins for for, for different reasons. Um, Burnley has always been a hard place for us. You have these mm. grounds that are notoriously hard. Sometimes we just get it over the line, like the Carabao Cup. Mm. Um, Kulisevsky, I think, is hugely key because, like we said, it may be if they play the low block, that one cross that comes in, that one opportunity, at least 
the quality is there there with him. Um, for me, I think there might, I don't know who or where, but I think there might be a couple of changes because I think he's more concerned, or I would be more concerned, about Leeds because Leeds, especially at, at Ellen Road, are going to be up for that match. They are in real yeah. trouble. And they never say die attitude and attack, 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 attack. Mm. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be all hands and energy on deck. So I think depending on um, how how long Reguilon going to be out with COVID or when he's available and can he trust Royale three games in a row? Um, does he want to risk Emerson's, uh, sorry, Ro Romero's uh, fitness three games in a week? There, there's loads of coulda, woulda, shoulda kind of thing. So. <clears throat> I expect there to be changes. He's got to make sure that Dyer is 100% ready for it. Because um, like we said, it's vital that we don't take any any risks with him. Um, we, 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 if these six points come in, then then we are we are laughing. But obviously, if we don't get a performance There's no tomorrow, laughing, Brian. There's no laughing. <laughs> but you, you know what? Compared to, I mean, like, obviously, if, if we don't get a result tomorrow, if we draw or the unthinkable, all the efforts of Saturday yeah, it's of just kind of... Uh, yeah, I agree. Been, I agree. Been, been thrown away, so so. I reckon there will be there will be a few changes, but the great thing is, it just went to show last week what a week on the training ground with Conte does. Yeah, full when he week. gets proper, a, a full week. I mean, please God, come preseason when uh, he gets that. But I I expect there to be changes. Like I said, that Vecors had a blinding blinding game against Brighton, and funnily enough, we were after him. And guess what happened there? Um, Mm -hmm. But but yeah, yeah, he looked he looked. I was surprised. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? I was surprised Burnley got him. I really was because he was mm -hmm. prolific in Germany. Um, obviously, the the lure of the Premier League. Um, he's dangerous. He's a big lump. He's uh, he's he's powerful. He's strong. He's got and the, the other ball. Guy, surprising. He's a bit crouchy esque. Well, they, in, in exactly, sense, right? exactly. Yeah. And the other guy, <laughs> I I would take at Spurs in a heartbeat. Maybe not with our trans targets that we just got in. But I love Dwight McNeil. I, yeah. he, he, on his day, is a very, very good player. Um, yeah. But it's, listen, Burnley is a horrible place to go to. And I, I'm talking about the stadium, the travel for the fans and everything. It's not, <laughs> it's not uh, a good trip. A it's not a good trip. Yeah, trip it's not, sure. I mean, Especially trying to get home. Too, right? Yeah, and trying to get home if you're going by train is a nightmare if there's any uh, issues getting out or, or, or whatever. But after that win... The, the 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 foundations and the springboard and the base has been laid to think. Do you know what? Look what we can do. So I expect there to be two changes. I don't like I said. I don't know where, but I I expect a, a, a convincing performance. Yeah, I think I think there'll be a couple of changes. I think I like I mentioned just before I asked you, Brian. I think I think we'll see Darty come in. I think we're gonna need again players that can break down teams that do sit in a low block if yeah. they end up there because we have a lot of the ball. Royale is not a good crosser of the ball. I'm not yeah. saying that Darty is a great crosser of the ball, but he's better than Royale. Um, and he doesn't have to defend as much against uh, a Burnley, whereas he, he he's which is arguably his, his worst attribute is his defending. He's not a good defender. Yeah. He's a good wing back when he's on his game. And we haven't seen a heck of a lot of that, but we have seen it here and there. Um, I'd like to see that. Uh, I'd like to see I'd like to see that change. I'd like to see him get an opportunity, rest the fullbacks, give Royale an opportunity the next time when we play Leeds where he's going to have to be on point defensively and going to have to run a lot. Um, whereas Darty go get skinned on a regular basis in that case. So I think it's, it's the right player to switch. I think mm -hmm. if Region is fit, post COVID if he, if, you know, if he's able to get himself up to snuff, maybe, maybe he didn't uh, suffer any, any consequences from it um, that I would rotate that position as well. R rotate, do, do what Posh did, rotate the wingbacks, utilize the wingbacks the way he wants to and uh, make sure that they're ready for ready for leads. Cause like you said earlier, Brad, that leads game from a, from a fitness perspective and the running they're going to have to do, yeah. it's going to be much like city, uh, you know, like they're going to have a lot of the ball. They're going to be getting in behind. They're going to be one touch, lots of one touch passing. <clears throat> Um, despite them, you know, suffering pretty badly at the beginning of the season with injuries, which they still are to some extent, they're yeah. still they're, they've 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 picked it up a little bit, and they're hard to play against. They're not they're not winning a lot, but they're hard to play against, and, and they'll get in behind us if we're not careful. So, uh, we got to do a lot, um, and I think that those wing back positions will be key. I don't know if you guys saw the. Um, the uh, the press conference today with uh, with, with with Conte. Did you see what he mm -hmm. said about about Kane? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you. I, did, I didn't. Oh, you did I absolutely didn't. brilliant. So he's like, uh, he said, I, I got. I'm paraphrasing, of course. He basically said, uh, you know, he was asked about injuries and who's going to play, and he, and he said that we talked about some of the players. You know, Kane's back being looking like he was sore and he was kind of limping. 
And he said, is, is Kane going to be good to play? And he's like, Kane's going to be good to play no matter what. I don't care if he's only got one leg. He's playing. <laughs> so, so it was like, it was pretty genius. And, you know, of course, obviously it was, a, it was in jest, but, but yeah. really, really funny and, and, and fantastic. Um, we, uh, we, 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 you know, Burnley away. It's it's sort of this this anomaly. This game, the the you know we we should we should have gotten points against Wolves and we should have gotten points against yeah. Southampton at home. This yeah. game for the top, when it comes to the top four race, which I think everybody wants us to be in, but we kind of we're fighting ourselves with it rather than actually like just going on a run. Um, what are the chances, uh, Lee, of 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 us going on a run, or, or, or should we just expect to be inconsistent um, for the rest of the season? Because that's kind of what the season's been. Has been yeah, but Tottenham are consistent in being inconsistent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, 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 they are, we are the experts at that. We're like Newcastle. Um, but Burnley for me reminds me of Stoke City. Yeah, they're, yeah it's, they're a similar, it's a similar. It's a similar game, team, isn't it? Yeah. Horrible team to play against. But I think you know the commitment against City obviously is more so than what we showed against Southampton and, 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 and Wolves. And I think you know Conte will not accept another two performances like Southampton and Wolves again. I think he knows that had the, if the players carry on with that attitude, um, they're out or they're going to be replaced or dropped. Um, it's, just, it's just so unfortunate we've got two really tough teams back to back, Leeds and Burnley. But then you can argue when's it going to be a good time playing them? We got to play them at some stage. Um, I think coming off the back of a Man City game, the result like that, I think it could be a perfect time for us to carry because we just can carry on that, mo- you know, that, you know, you know, that um, movement also and, and that. But I think, you know, it's, I think it's got a good chance. And I think if you can get two wins or even three wins or two wins a draw or vice versa, it's perfect for us. And obviously, you know, Arsenal are going to be sweating. Um, and obviously, Man United are. Oof, they're not great, are they? Um, they, they they've, I, I, I've had been saying that, but Man United are, are unbeaten in seven and won five. Yeah, in I know that they're not great, but they're doing the thing that we want to be doing, which is getting away with it and still getting results, even though you're not playing at your West best. Ham will drop. West Ham will, West Ham will definitely drop. Wolves are still right there with us, though. I, 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 you know, if Wolves can yeah. stay fit, I'd be, I'd be worried about them to some extent as well. Um, do you think we can get top four? And you think that's a feasibility, Lee? It's gonna be tight. Uh, I always, always uh, heard from someone the other day, and I think if they said it could go down to goal difference. Yeah, um, very well. And obviously, we can't. We've got to stop conceding goals. <laughs> we are we not. We're not in a good position for that at all. No, <laughs> we're on naught at yeah. the moment. Uh, we don't yeah. want to go into into minus. We need to get into plus. Yeah, you know, it's no good scoring goals if we're going to concede goals because it's it's just not going to help us either way. Um, if it does go to goal, go down to goal difference, and that's going to be hurtful at the end of the season because we can we are conceding stupid goals. Even against also against Man City, we can see the two goals. Um, but no, I think I think we can just scrape it. Um, I think the fact that the teams above us have got um, European football, which we haven't got, we haven't got to worry about that. So we've got a whole week to. Prepare I think it's Arsenal, the only team that doesn't, right? Uh, well, yeah, exactly. I think Wolves yeah, are even in Europe. Are Wolves in we've Europe? We've got the advantage. No, with, I mean, not anymore. You know, okay. to have that midweek game, we've got that advantage, and mm-hmm. we got we got to capitalize on that. We got to have a good week of training and go into the next match full of confidence. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think, I think the fitness is going to be key. I, I think, you know, key. you keep Dyer fit, you keep, um, Hoybier fit and, exactly. and, and you make sure that you rotate in those positions that you need to rotate and we can get through these yep. games. Twan, Twan 55, Holly, I'll get your thoughts on that as well. When, uh, but I want to, I want to respond to, to Twan 55. Thanks for being here, Twan. Um, he, he's not as positive as some of the other, <laughs> some of the other Spurs fans. We ain't getting but these two games. Why? Yeah, no, and it's fair, and I, I was going to get to that. Sorry, but we're Spurs ever, ever going to win these. No, I wouldn't say never, ever. There's a chance we certainly chance we could, but we we are better against the best events against the top six. That's just statistically yeah. true, um, mm. and, and and unfortunate because uh, I think there's something to be said about again what we're just talking about is breaking teams down that sit deeper. That when we have more of the ball, we're not as good. We're better mm. at one touch football where we're counterattacking and we're, when we are. Um, able to get in behind defenses and when there's yeah. space there to do it. Um, and I think that's going to be key. So good, good comment, Twana. And I, I don't disagree with you there that it's hard to believe that considering, and that's kind of why I asked the question, considering we went from <clears throat> doing reasonably well, seemingly progressing to losing, uh, you know, losing those two games that arguably we should have, you know, especially at home should have won. These are away yep. games or away, our away record right now is better than our home record, which is surprising. But Holly, your thoughts on, on that, uh, you know, top four, what what do you think? Uh, what do you what are you feeling on? I don't think I've heard you you speak about it yet, so I'm curious. Uh, it's it's really difficult because it is the hope that kills you, and it happens every single time. I mean, it was funny yesterday. Mickey Hazard was saying that 
it was the same when he was playing football as well. You always want to play the bigger teams. And when you mm. like play teams that like Burnley, you just kind of, you shouldn't, but you just kind of roll over and be like, oh, it's just Burnley. So I can kind of see why in that kind yep. of sense, we play high against the top six, but it is difficult. I think we just need to look at it on game by game, as boring as that sounds, what a rubbish answer that is. I just don't think I can really think that far ahead just because I do it every time and it kills me every time when we just fall short. So I'd like to say yes, <laughs> But I can't commit to yes at the moment. No, I'm on fence. Yeah, I think it's a, that's the hard thing, right? And, and especially with Spurs at this at this moment, the reality of it is is that we don't know which one's going to show up. You know, we 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 what happened at Leicester, what Brian got to witness uh, at Leicester, and what he got to witness at at City. Those are two of the top teams, arguably, like, you know, in the last few seasons. You, yeah. you know what City have been doing, but Leicester have been in there as well. They have quality and, they're, you know, they're, they're a good side. They're not having a good season, but they're a good side, a lot of injuries. Um, but when we come up against the teams that sit deep, that's the, that's where we struggle. Bri, do you think uh, top four is on or are you are you reluctant like the other two and myself to say that it is? I, I think we spoke about this the other day and I think I think I was on the fifth train um, rather than the fourth train and not being happy about it, but likely the likelihood is... So, so I'm on the same train as you. Fifth is still progression in Europa League from last year. It's still progression, yeah. and, and I, wor I worry you, about that with Conte and, and Kane. But yeah, but, I feel you. Well, this, well, this is the thing. Again, the FA Cup is there, and let's see. I'm trying not to talk about a certain person, but let's see if yeah. uh, the summer what the summer looks like. Yeah, big, big day. But but when it comes to the top four, what you got to remember as well, which is huge. We need to get this result tomorrow because Thursday Arsenal play Wolves. Yeah, that's a big and, game. We need a draw in that game. And one, yeah, one, and one, it, one. it takes huge. What you got to remember as well, we still got to go to Old Trafford, a ground notoriously we haven't done well apart from with Poch and one with AVB. Um, yeah. We still got to go to Anfield, which is an absolute nightmare for Tottenham to get uh, three points in the Premier League. It's 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 an absolute. So obviously we got the filth to come to us and the run. The running, like we've said, we've got not we've got the easiest running where it comes to not playing the big big hitters. But there's a lot of people there struggling for for Premier League survival, and with that Premier League survival, obviously comes if you go down, your wages get halved or whatever. There's people within that uh, clubs that may lose jobs because of finance. So they have a lot to fight for. We we, we are fighting, and I, I just think. We're one injury away in midfield, like if it was a, a, Kul, uh, a Kulisevsky or a, a, a It's amazing ben, how we're ben relying Tom. on relying on him already as much as we are. If, if, it, 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 was if it was a Dyer <laughs> or if it was a Kane, one injury in one kind of department, and it's like, oh, here we go. Here we go. So that's that's my only concern because of the strength in depth. I <clears> think <throat> it's – don't get me wrong. I think we're going to be in the conversation, and I think we'll make a push for it. We'll make a real. We won't just be like. I think this is going to go down to like the last two or three, maybe even the last game of the season. I think the most important thing, which is most vital, when the Premier League and Sky need to sort their bloody heads out, is confirm when that Arsenal game is. Are you going to put it in when there's a free week available? We're not in Europe. That is, like so the, biggest, that is the biggest game or, of the season. Right now. Or are you trying to wait and see if this is going to be a Man City Spurs Premier hmm. League uh, Champions League all takes all and try and cash in? <clears throat> at the end of the season once this game th this game is hovering over us and i just want to see obviously we're playing the burnley game um shortly uh tomorrow we've already played the leicester one that got rearranged um we just got the brighton and arsenal ones that were still, still three games in hand on on united who are currently in fourth so that is the yeah. you know that's the 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 spot we got to hit which is three games in hand on and that's, it, um... it, exactly but this is the thing like i always say with those three games in hand, if you could give me, uh, let's say, five points and have them on the board, all right, we haven't overtaken them. I think we need seven. Seven, we need, yeah, we need seven to be level with them, and obviously, I think like, we need seven like, just generally to be in the conversation properly. Yeah, well, well, this, me. I mean, this, this is this is a thing, but like I said, having the points on the board is always better than thinking right because again, the pressure of like right, if we win this game, we really progress. Okay, if we get this, I'd r rather have the points on the board maybe not five i'll take six let's say six yeah uh, we need more than five, and, and definitely five three of them against, <laughs> and three of them always against arsenal always yeah. the three and then whoever um i think we're gonna push we're gonna huff and, a pu and puff and i think we'll just 
just because, like I said, one injury. You're asking 12, 13 players to stay 100% fit and 100% sharp for the rest of the season, which yeah, is nigh on, nigh on impossible. But if Conte, I'm not saying he's going, but if Conte is our manager come first game of the season, for me, Champions League is already guaranteed. Guaranteed because he's had a preseason with the players he's got a full preseason. Yeah, levels. I think we're even. I think we're in the conversation for in the. You know, I'm not saying title winning, but for much of the season, we'll be in the conversation. Of, yeah, of, that, that, that's yeah, what this playing man, with that's those teams at the level again it has to be has to be backed properly for that. that to that's what this man will give you. But the good thing is, as I say about going away to Anfield and going away to Old Trafford, is we haven't lost outside of London this season. Yeah, yeah that's a great statistic. So, well, okay. So, so, so on that on that note, Brian, this is a good good time for a segue. A score prediction uh, for Burnley. Um, and what is that noise, by the way? Who, who's riding their bike in the house? Oh, that's because I live next to a busy ride now. Uh, okay. okay. okay you moved. <laughs> Not bad. Past. No, it's okay. Well, it's all good. I was just like wondering where it was coming from. But I want to go around score predictions, and then we're going to do uh, who are you, which uh, well, well, I'll explain once we get everybody's um, everybody's thoughts on the the score predictions, Brian. Score predictions. Um, seeing that I'm not there, I'm not going for 3 2 last minute winner because I'm not there. Um, I am going to go for a 2 0 win and both from Harry Kane. 2 0, Harry Kane brace. Love it. Holly? I'm going to go for a KG 1 0 Harry Kane goal, I think. It's very KG. Lee, Lee, you're, you're a 1 0 as well, mate? Yeah, you yeah, you kind of like because don't be there a bit. I was going to go, uh, I think it's going to be 2 1. But I think we snatch it very late. Nice, another late, another late one. Very right? late. I think it's gonna be very stress, late. We're gonna stress this out again, like they always do, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna go one 0 I'm with Holly on this. I think it's gonna be super tight, super ugly. Um, it's gonna be aggressive. It's gonna be uncomfortable. Um, mm. We're gonna be stressed out. I do think it'll be late, a late winner as well. I don't. I, yeah. I, we we need to sc score early if we're gonna open them up and score more goals. I just don't know that yep. we're gonna do that. So, well, um, you got to see, Brian. One thing I will say: what we did with City is we we've been saying time after time after time after time. Start fast, start sharp, set yep. the agenda, and we did that against City, and we, we did, saw yeah. the tone the tone it set. So mm -hmm. it's harder to do. It's harder to do that though when you have to break them down to do it. Yeah, no, that's that's again, but question, even if yeah. you're just constantly going forward, not just creating a just to say right, yeah. first five ten minutes, let's just say we've got over sixty percent possession or, or a lot of it's in there. Just that kind of start to say, okay, yeah. it's not the back back fourth fourth uh, blah blah blah, um, will be huge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, okay, so we always do a segment at the end of our show when we have guests on on our podcast. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to start with you, Holly, because I don't know how much how, how, how much time you have. Tell us a little bit about your channel. Tell us a little about your, your experience as a Spurs fan, where you watch from, uh, your love of, of uh, Harry Winks, or your, your no longer love <laughs> of Harry Winks. <laughs> your bipolar um, relationship with Harry Winks. Yeah, so. give, give us a bit of a rundown of, of your, uh, your, your, your Spurs relationship and uh, your, your dwindling relationship with the man behind you hanging upside down. So um, I was born into Tottenham because my dad was born in North London and then he moved down south. Um, and then I've now moved to Pompey. So I've got another reason to hate Southampton as well. Um, so I tried to get to as many games as possible, but um, I'm sadly a teaching assistant in the daytime. So me getting to games is, is pretty hard at the moment. But um, instead, I, I, I talk about Tottenham instead every Monday. All these hot says live. I get guests on pretty much like this just to talk about the game just gone. Um and yeah, that's pretty much me. Just Holly Agenbar. That that's my name. That's what I do. Nice. And so I had posted your link uh, in the chat. I just did it again. If you just hop on over to channels, brilliant content. Uh, Mickey yep. Hazard, you had on earlier today. So uh, you know, it's really really great stuff. I recommend it. Uh, hop on over. Um, Lee, your turn, brother. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your your, your channel and what you're doing on YouTube and uh, your Spurs relationship. Yeah, um, I obviously started sporting Spurs in the late eighties. I was, you know, my my dad was born in um, in um, Buckinghamshire or uh, Berkshire, shall I say? And my my family are Tottenham fans, but I obviously was born in Somerset. Um, so my football around here is either got to be Yeovil Town or Bristol City, and all of that. So less said about that. Um, <laughs> do you, yeah, do you struggle uh, where you are with being a Spurs fan? Does anybody give you a hard time? Um, there's a lot of. Spurs support group, so there's one about 10 miles away, which we go to all the home games and away games. There's a few Chelsea support groups around here, but the majority of them are all like West Country teams who like 
um, you know, like, uh, like I said, Swindon Town or places like Yeovil Town, just awful to watch. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's that's my background. Spurs. I've been going as much as I can, but be, also being some sets, it's quite difficult to to get to games and um, and and obviously the expense and the prices of it and everything. Um, yeah, so that's that's my love 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 of Tottenham. Um, my first game was nineteen eighty eight when David Pleat was in charge. Um, so Lee, yeah. can you can you share a link to your channel, um, which I, I should have gotten yeah, in, in I've, advance? I've got in the first in... channel as such, um, the, the name which I show is just so I can come onto YouTube, like your channel, and, and we are Tottenham TV. That's the two channels I I, I come on when I, when when you invite me on. But um, my actual, I got a Facebook page, which because obviously um, I have a paranormal business right. in 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 Somerset, and that's that's my that's my Facebook page, which is Somerset Paranormal Investigations, um, and obviously cool. Tottenham is just my hobby and that's my business but i've got no spare how account. long will it be a hobby for before you turn it into it because because this is what we all start as oh i'm just gonna go on some yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I've got, a few I've years got no later subscribers. here we all are and it's like oh, i'm gonna make a career of this man this is great <laughs> yeah no i've got no subscribers but um i obviously i love tottenham and obviously i like to pop on the comments and obviously and have, have my views and stuff and just to pop on the, you know, the channel like this is it's fantastic just to have a chat and with you know good company and everything's just great. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. No, it's a pleasure to have you, Brian. Any questions for our guests? No, no, I just have to say, I mean, obviously it's always brilliant having Holly. I was on a show, I think it was the last time I was here in the UK before I went back. Um, and we definitely need to get her on. And I have to say, with Lee, it's actually good to be on a stream with him because the way I started knowing about Lee is he reached out to me on YouTube, uh YouTube, uh Instagram via um seeing me uh outside Hot Hotspur Way and uh we literally yeah. speak every day. We literally speak. Yeah. It's just, this is the great thing, as Bobby K knows recently. This community that we've set up with uh, the Tottenham community, obviously, you see it with other teams, all have their other channels, but they're very, yeah. very competitive or don't yeah. collaborate or don't support each other. Yeah. It's like, why are you trying to take a slice of our pie? Why are you doing this? And yeah. the community we, we, we've created, not just with the the people that come on the stream but the the people in the chat as well whether it be mm -hmm. talking via the chat or this, or this fella media. even though he, he he tortures you on a daily basis he's still yeah <laughs> since sunday he's become my arch nemesis um yeah. but but it's just people like that it's like holly came on like i said our previous channel we've been up but i speak to holly occasionally it's got to be a lot more i've been terrible what last few months what with everything going on um but it's just incredible the friendship, the community, the, the going to Spurs now recently. When I used to go as a kid, or when I had my season ticket, it used to be rock up at the ground, go watch the game, get out, go home, but with the mates I went with. Whereas now it's yep. kind of go to the pub beforehand, yep. meet up with everyone, chill at the goal line bar, shouting and screaming with Ben and <laughs> Simeon, grandpa and everyone, watch the game, meet up after, maybe go out for dinner. It's just, it's been one of the greatest experiences and best yeah. things is seeing people like Lee coming on now and uh, and uh, Bobby Kay and like the quiz show we were on Spurs, new channels, but it's just an incredible, incredible thing that we're all a part yeah. of. Yeah, for sure. And speaking Very of working great. together, uh, Holly is going to be on the channel a little bit more in the near future. We'll uh, look for those announcements, but we're looking forward to having her around. She's uh, fantastic. Offers a lot, so looking forward to that. Uh, I want to thank you both, Holly and Lee, for being here. It's been no, a pleasure, so absolute much. pleasure. It's it's, it's a bit tight. We're keeping it tight today. Uh, people have things to do, but um, sometimes tighter is better. Uh, hop on and uh, yeah, we've got we've got Friday. Um, we're doing their collaboration with the, the Irish Hotspur on this channel. Tune in; it'll be uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. Wait, I've got that, that times to be just like I've got workout no, time. It'll be the I morning think. Eastern, the afternoon GMT. Yeah. We'll, we'll look for the look for the um, the thumbnail on YouTube and make sure you, you tune in for it it's been a successful show really enjoying that a lot more relaxed for sort of friday getting prepared for the weekend uh um, so look for that and then of course um yeah just uh, more and more content coming so thanks everybody for being here yep. and uh thank good. you guys again we'll definitely have you back and we'll definitely looking forward to to working with you holly and uh have a good one guys we'll just a soon. quick one just a oh, quick right. one we just had yep. this super chat come in so i oh, want to just say yeah. hello yep. to, Sorry, to jim, jim bird coys yep. who uh has, I, I think i've seen him on henry wright's channel when i've been on there and he's come over so thank you for your support mate uh Great stream again. Proper fans talking sense. Now following you all. Keep up the amazing work. Awesome, Thank Jim. Appreciate that, mate. So and, uh, yeah. This and, is and, the community we've set. This is yeah. the community we've set. It's amazing. I'm glad to have you as part of it, Jim.
Yeah, excellent stuff. And not we're not great at asking for super chats. Um, we're we're trying to get better at it because it's it's going to help support what we're doing. So if you ever are, uh, have the ability or opportunity to to do it, we we'd appreciate all the support. So thanks for that. And cheers, Jim. One second, Brian. Can you just as well? So just what what's uh, Tottenham Tour's email? It is info dot at gmail <clears throat> Uh, it is in the comments, or sorry, in the description of this video, so you can go there and find it. Um, and uh, yeah, we're also just one one quick note I forgot uh, to mention as well. We did a mental health show a few weeks yeah. back. Um, uh, our GoFundMe link is also in the description if you can donate. Yeah. I think we're at about eight hundred and sixty or something like oh, that now. Up. Yeah, it went Ooh. up. Uh, we got a couple more uh, donations. So if you can hop on there, if you can afford it, awesome. Um, it's, it's, it's on for... my Facebook page as well. Just oh, it, thanks. We appreciate Fantastic. that. Yeah, yeah, really, really appreciate that. It's for a good cause. Obviously, mental health is an important thing, especially the the times we're in. Everybody's going through a lot of shit, and the support we can give, um, uh, you know, both with with links and also just a conversation. Um, hop good on over, check, well. check. The, yeah, one hundred percent. Lee, check the stream. Hop on there. Um, if you can donate, you can. If not, uh, no biggie as well. But hopefully, you can get some help if if required. So yeah, thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate you Thank being you. here and uh yeah we'll see you soon have a Lean good one out come on you spurs there you go. Out. Leave. Oh, <laughs>